Hello and welcome to Infinity, and welcome indeed to version 2. And there's a lot of things in this, and it's well worth the upgrade. And if you want to know what is the, the new things, and, and certainly the first thing I thought, go to the website, go to Photo, and then go to Text Specs, and then scroll down, and you'll eventually get to Full Feature List. And the first of these is new features. So I just click on that. And I've got here a whole bunch of things which are in this. So, of course, we haven't got time to go through everything there at the moment. And I'm going to do a bunch of new videos um, taking on particular subjects uh, within this on the new things to, to explain them and show them and show them how they're used. But... Um, if we go to the product itself, a really good place to go as well to say, how do I do this? If I go to help and the photo to help system there, and this is surprisingly good. This appears on another screen, so I'm going to bring it onto this one here. Small text on this, but if I pull down the control and roll the mouse wheel, I can make it get bigger. So if I click on that, down here it says new features in version 2. So now I've got in the help system, which is actually very good, uh, a whole bunch of things here. So I can click on any one of these and it tells me a lot more about it. So I would certainly well recommend that. So now if you're going to like, oh, let's open a document. If I go to file and open, this just gives me a standard kind of open thing. What I prefer is I go to file and new. And the reason is I brings up a dialogue here. Yes, you could start an open document, but what about other ones? Well, open is here for a start, so that's the same. What I use a lot of is recent. If I click on recent, here are the recent files that I've been working on. And so I can go to this one here, double click on that. And that's a raw file, so that's going to open up in the develop persona. And here we are. And so we can do things like this, and I can play around with these and do things and you know play with the various colors etc and then as usual i'm going to hit develop but before i do that i look at here which says output and if i click drop this down here look i can go to pixel layer and that's the same as version one so it just outputs a very pixel layer and in the assistant up here it says raw output format 16 bits so you get a good size to work on but if you want to use the actual raw layer which is a really good idea you can either do it embedded here so it actually takes a copy of it into and it's held within the image file or you can leave it where it is but when you do that you got you can't move the final files around because it it'll lose where the raw linked file is so for now go do the embedded unless you've got a fixed file structure that you use and when I develop that, that's going to come into the photo persona. And you can see you've got the same here. You notice you're already that the the icons here are slightly different. They decided to refresh them. And that's okay if you like them. That's fine. So here they comes into the layer here. And the layer system is, again, has varied. I'm going to do a separate video on this, as I will with a number of things. But if I want to go back and re-edit this, I double click on it and it goes back to the develop persona. Notice here I can't change how I save it again because I've come from the photo. So I can click develop to any changes that I make within this. And then I hit develop and I've saved those, which this means that it makes the whole of the raw engine develop persona as a non-destructive system so you can go back and use those at any time you've got to be quite careful with this because there are things like if i go here and i go oh look this looks like a bit of a dust spot there let's go to the in painting tool and i'll paint on that to kind of fix that but look the assistant says here hang on a moment you want to change that. You can't just change the raw in here. So I've just turned it into a pixel layer for you. So now if I hover over the ledge edge of this, it says pixel. But don't worry, I can go back, use the history. I can wind it back here, go to develop. 
And then if I hover over the edge here, see it says raw, so I've now got back my raw file. So if I wanted to fix this, then I might, for example, do a add pixel layer. Then with the in painting brush tool, go to current layer, current layer and below, and then paint on that. And that will then fix this. So that is now gone. I can also go back here and I can re-edit this. And but if I do this now, then if I change this somehow, let's say I increase the contrast a little bit, and I just turn it down a little bit. So anyway, just do something, and then I develop that again. Now you can see here that patch there is different, and it's because it's outside of this because this is so you've got to figure out how you're going to do this kind of thing. So, and it's just one of those tricks to watch out for. And, and when you get a new system you can do things with, there's also things, you know, there's tips and, and traps and things you can do with that. So what else? Let's have a quick look at preferences. So I go to edit preferences here, and this has been slightly jiggled. There are things like the assistant control. So if you go to the assistant here to look at things, you'll come to this. User interface, you can change this. So you can change the background text. So that's the text getting brighter and darker. And you can make the background here. And if you click on the UI contrast here high, it simply jiggles these above here to create this sort of darker uh, environment here, which if you want, you know, if you, you have sort of visual uh, issues, then this can help. It's easy to make it easier to see things. I'm just going to return it to the default for now. When you've got two layers here now, layers are slightly different. So if I go on there and click on curves, for example, this player is here, but if I click on the little left hand panel there, now you can see here I've got several layers, to, uh, bits of this. There's a vertical line there which shows this is indented. The next one says this is a curves adjustment. The next one here is the icon for it, and there's lots of different icons, but you'll get used to the ones which you use. And now I can kind of work on these like this. What I can do as well with this is if I just put that back for now, I can put on a mask on this. And if I go down to masks here, I've got some new masks here, and I include things like luminosity masking, and I'm going to do more detail, another video on these. If I click on that there, it's actually gone to the top here. I'm going to drag it back down. You can drag it onto the icon there. And then I can open that up with the little one here. And if I go to the luminosity mask here, <clears throat> then I can play with this here. And it's a bit like curves. So this is the light, this is dark, but up and down is luminosity. Perhaps a bit more like blend ranges or blend options. And but if I click on preview here, this is really useful because this is going to show me what I is going to happen with this. So let's just take this as a, um, say I've made this a bit darker here. So I click on this now and click on preview. And then when I move these around here, now you can see what is going to be applied here. So in other words, it's going to work on, if I can then I grab here, put another point in here. So these areas here, so it's applying just to the darker areas here. So the lighter areas like the sky and so on, it's not being applied. So when I click on the curves here, you can see it's only those areas. I can also go back to this and I can change that, how that's applied there. So this gives us me quite a bit of power in what I do with that. So other things in here, you've got things like blend modes. When you go to a blend mode, there's a thing called a special eight. Again, I'll cover it in another video. If you know what the special eight is, you've now got the ability to do fill opacity properly, which you come in the little blend options here. It's this one here, this fill opacity, just grayed out there for the moment. And you've got the things like the live filters here. You've now got the mesh warp and displace alive. So you can do a lot more with that. 
if I used to go to view and studio here, this is missing because it's now just straight under windows. So it's just, a, it saves you a click and a drag around with that to turn on the various panels. So for example, the adjustment panel, which used to be come here, is useful if you're a beginner. Uh, and it also holds things like presets. But that's not here, but you can always put that in through that window look here. Some other things have changed. So, for example, if I go to view and show grid, I don't see it because it has been taken down to the pixel level. But I can always go down to vid, view and grid and axis. And I can do things like this to bring up the grid and take that off from here and so on. So the, that, those, some of those things like that have changed. I can, if I do just put a shape on here, so let's take a ellipse tool here and put on a shape. And that looks odd there because it's in there. Let's just drag it to the top. There we go. So there's a normal shape on that. If I go to the FX here, there's some things I can do with this. If I go to outline and then I change the color to say red and I turn the radius kind of all the way up here so you can see there I've got 100 pixel radius. Now I have a little plus on that. I can click on another one. I can add an outline to this. So if I change this to blue, I've got a blue radius here. But this is on the top one here, but there's another one down here. So what I can do is I can, if I move this one down here, I'll, I'll, first of all, hang on, I'll put this to 200 pixels. So that's bigger. But I want to put this one underneath because this one here is the original red one. So I take this, go down to the little arrow at the bottom, plug this down here, and oh look, I've got double outline. So it gives me the ability to do things like this. If I take another one here, I take the, say, the heart tool, and I drag this on here, then I can go to this original one here. If I go to the color picker here and change, I've got style picker. So I can click on here and transfer it to this one up here. So this is great if you're doing graphic stuff. It, it, it caters very well for this sort of thing. Something else I can do, if I go to the stock here, uh, make sure just that the shapes are connected again, go to stock, put in something like face, then drag a picture here up to the fill so I can fill with a space, with a, with a face here. So I click on that one there and oh look, it's appeared in the middle here. All kinds of things like this. If I go to the color here, I go to the color wheel, then when I click picking colors, they appear here as a history. And I've also got, can change this now to a square one. So now I've got hue around the outside and I've got in the middle here, I've got left and right is saturation up and down is luminosity. So there you go. There's a whole bunch of things. I am said I'm going to do a number of videos using these. There is more. Do look at the help system. And I hope that has given you something of a look at all kinds of things that you're going to find in here. Anyway, that's it for now. And thank you very much for watching.